Penny Boudreaux pleaded guilty to second-degree murder today, admitting she killed her 12-year-old daughter, Carissa, because the child was in the way of her relationship with her boyfriend. The court heard that Boudreaux had been contemplating the murder for several days. On January 27, 2008, she drove around with Carissa and stopped at the Bridgewater Sobey. She was, she was uh, alive and, and well when she was at the, uh, the parking lot at Sobey's and when uh, Ms. Boudreaux made the call to Mr. McCumber and reported her missing. She was still in the car, still alive, and uh, it was from there uh, at the Sobeys that she left, took her to the Williams Head Road, and strangled her. Our understanding from, from what Ms. Boudreaux described, she was slumped in the passenger seat in the, the well area, uh, likely not visible to the public. Uh, and uh, at that point, she drove her up to Tim Hortons, took the twine, put it in a Tim Hortons cup, and put it into a Tim Hortons garbage can, where obviously with the many Tim Hortons cups would never be discovered. The understanding that we have for motive uh, appeared to be twofold from the statements she gave to the undercover operator. Uh, the first and primary motivating factor appeared to be that uh, she felt that Carissa's presence was a danger to the relationship continued between her and, and Vernon and that she had to kill her to uh, take care of that problem. And secondly, uh, there was discussion by her about uh, this 12-year-old talking badly about her to friends and to people in the community, and she didn't want that to happen, uh, particularly uh, at this stage. And that uh, those two appear to be the factors which uh, ended up motivating her to kill her daughter. Although the crime was obviously planned, the Crown accepted a guilty plea to second-degree murder to save the family the ordeal of a trial. This is a case where to give the family closure, to uh, give the community closure, to uh, prevent and spare the family the anguish of a trial, a life sentence for second-degree murder uh, is the same as a life sentence for first-degree murder. The question is when the person may first apply for parole, whether it's at uh, anywhere from 10 to 25 years or, or 25 years. And in this case, we had arrived with a joint submission uh, at uh, a parole ineligibility period that was very high, 20 years, uh, and uh, felt that it was a fit and appropriate uh, resolution, taking into account the life sentence, regardless of whether it was first degree or second. For the family, hearing why Carissa died was difficult. I can't call it anything other than a senseless act. I mean, the options were there. And you know, for a, for a parent to just so make that decision, I still can't comprehend it. She had many options. There was many people around her that would have gladly, gladly, you know, had I known this was going to happen, I would never, ever let her go back. But I mean, what parent's going to try to, you know, say, no, you can't go back and see your mother? Chris and I always had a special bond. I mean, and, and I feel a bad because I have things full of doubt, because my brother loved her just as much and spent more time than, than I did with her. I mean, he, he basically, he, if I wasn't there, he was there by her side. So, I mean, he's kind of got left uh, on, on the wayside, but I mean, he was just as much of a father to her as I was. Well, you know what's made me strong? Is spending time with the kids around me, around the community and that stuff. And I mean, them little kids, the children were devastated. I mean, how many children at that age have a best friend that's, that's brutally murdered? You know, you hear your friend's name across the TV you know, every day constantly when it all first happened about, it, about a, your best friend or somebody you knew. There's, children do not go through that very often. And from my working with the children and that stuff and talking to them, you know, that, that, that helped me through it. John Collier said he knows the case has been difficult for all involved, including investigators. We're, we're human beings too. Our, my members have uh, little ones as well. Uh, I have a daughter. Um, and this case in particular uh, resonated with all of them. Uh, and, but it, what it did was it strengthened our resolve to uh, bring uh, some closure to the community uh, and to the family and bring justice for Carissa. Just start off. For SouthShoreNow.ca, I'm Lisa Brown.